Okay, so we will continue with the next speaker and the next uh, talk. Um, this talk will be done with, uh, by Tobias Gombrom. He's a managing director of Tame Stanley. And he will be talking about two very relevant uh, OWASP projects. That's the OWASP guide for CISOs and also the CISO survey results, which we'll always we'll be very interested in. Okay, uh, hi together, um, a very warm welcome and a warm welcome to whoever is on the screens outside. I hope there are more people watching afterwards than are in the room right now, because this is kind of, this is probably the least amount of people I ever had in a talk. <laughs> so I, 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 bear with me, this is kind of unusual for me, normally it's kind of 100 or plus. Um, Anyway, I hope you will find the content I can talk you about uh, interesting and maybe you go out later and talk with others and they come and watch it afterwards. Uh, because I think uh, quite a number of these things are useful to managers but also to developers, project leaders uh, and even to consultants and pen testers if you want to work with larger organizations. Usually it helps if you understand what the other person across the desk is thinking about and what his concerns are or her concerns are. If you have questions, um, we have a five minute Q&A at the end, but if you don't understand something, just raise your hand and I will try to swap it in right away. So this is, oh, okay, now it's not working anymore. Maybe I'm going too far away from the desktop. Ha, it's a range thingy. Okay, uh, this is just why I'm in the room. Um, I've been talking and training CISOs and advising them for about, uh, roughly for more than 100 people I've advised so far and trained. And I was actually a head of InfoSec myself before and I stumbled across a lot of problems when I encountered OWASP. Um, because it was just not, I didn't know what to do, what to use. Um, oops, okay. So what I like to talk about today are two things, two projects that we started in last year. One is the CISO guide, which is um, the project leader is Marco Morana. Uh, unfortunately, he can't be here with us today, but um, many greetings to you online. Um, so he, he actually works in a larger organization himself and out of practice, he wrote up the things that he thought might be useful for others when they work with OWASP. And the second part will be the CISO survey and report. So in the last few months, we conducted a survey and asking information security managers about what is up with application security. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, too much talking. Uh, what is up with your application security program? What kind of problems do you see? What's the trend for the next year? And um, here you will see the first few results that we already compiled. So this is fresh from the press. This is not even printed yet. And you're the first one to see uh, the, the parts of the results of this. Um, yeah. Actually, both projects feed into each other. So what we find in the survey will back we'll go back into the guide in the future. No? Yeah. Um, one thing that Marco actually found is there is a certain gap between managers and developers. Let me ask you, um, who think, if, if you ask a developer and a manager whether the application is secure or whether most of the applications are secure, who do you think is more confident. If it's the developer, raise your hand now. Okay, if it's the manager, yeah, the audience is right. Usually the managers think, oh, everything's fine. But when you talk with the developers and you hear the truth, ah, oh, sorry guys. You have about 70% of the developers think, oh, it's not really addressing security while 50% of the managers only think that. So there are quite a number of managers who just, well, live in the dark or somewhere in the fogs. Um, you can extend this with this misperception, this perception gap to many other questions. Oh, I'm already going to. 
this tool is really not helping too much. Um, so from that um, misperception or this perception gap, we started to think about, okay, what, what do the CISOs worry about? And maybe we can help them understand better reality. So their concerns are information security strategy, risk assessment and management, governance, quite abstract themes. And in, in many ways, OWASP did not address them so much in the past. No? Yeah. So we want to bridge this. Yeah. Make application security more... Oh, gosh. This, I'm so sorry. This tool is not... Yeah, maybe the cl old classical mouse is helping better. Um, we want to help bring application security, make it more visible in the information security management. Help uh, people how to prioritize fixing vulnerabilities, analyzing the cyber threats they are encountering, and also help with some, actually promote some information security training. And to measure the risks as they are. So what we started to write up is uh, the CISO guide, which is consisting of four main areas that I think are quite useful if you are in a project leader position or if you have to report to a manager. Uh, these tools and guidelines may help you um, promote and also just report what is going on and what you want to do, how you write your roadmap, your strategy, and how you translate application security risks into management talk in some regards. Um, yeah, so the first part is reasons for investing, because probably most of you in the room have heard, well, we should fix it, but we have no money. And um, yeah, that's a common theme, at least I hear this all the time. Oh, we know budget. No, no. Come back next year. And then, oh, we already finished our budget. You're too late. Come back next year again. Um, so in this case, we, we try to help you with some reasons and some um, arguing, uh, some lines of argument how to convince or how to, how to decide whether to invest. So we are not telling you, oh, this is the way how you can convince people. We are telling you these are possible, um, possible chains of argument, ch chains of reason that you can use to determine for yourself and also for your management team what you want to do. Um, so we are looking at uh, external standards, we are looking at risk management parts, how do you do this? Actually, it's fairly lightweight, so we are not trying to reinvent the wheel and give you a 200 pages risk management book, because you can go somewhere to Amazon and buy it. But we are trying to make this easy and quick, as always with OWASP. We try to give you the simple things, the, the quick solution, the quick win. Well, we have these 300 pages developer guide too, but yeah. I haven't read it yet. <laughs> um, the second part will be criteria to manage your application security risks. So uh, thinking about exploits, uh, thinking about how you mitigate risks when you are targeted, what are threat, what kind of threat agents would you expect, what kind of type of attacks would you expect. Third part is uh, the selection um, of an application security process. So how do you introduce application security in your development lifecycle, for example? And actually on, on the statistics part, I just recently compiled, I just actually yesterday compiled the part of how many companies have an SCLC, and it is surprisingly low. So a secure development life cycle is kind of less than half reported they have a real secure development life cycle. So this talks about how you introduce application security parts into your process. Um, what kind of activities you want to put in there, and how you, actually the, the, another part is how you choose good OWASP parts for your processes as well. So this looks at OWASP projects from a management perspective. So for example, uh, recommendations would be like secure coding, pra uh, secure coding practices best, no, best practices guide. No, secure coding reference, no, gosh, sorry, I'm, I'm totally, this, this is a very long word for a very short guide, very highly, highly recommended. Um, 
Part four is actually also about metrics. Because if you don't measure, it's usually very difficult to convince people that you either got better or worse or what you're doing at all. I mean, maybe after a year, you come back and say, oh, yeah, we are much more secure. And then your peers ask you, okay, and show me why. And then you, yeah, we have less attacks. Yeah, that's a good, good metric. Yeah, that's one metric. But do we have less attack because less people care about us? <laughs> Or do we have less attack because we are actually stronger? Or we just don't know it? I mean, maybe we have no idea whether we are attacked. Huh? So metrics for um, application security vulnerability and also for uh, mitigation and how you handle stuff. So I give you for this only the high level parts because if you want to read, I want to give you, make you some appetite. I encourage you to just go to the link and download uh, the document and, and just read through it if you have your next decision, how to make a strategy, how to inc uh, include application security in your management processes. Or next time you have to go to your boss and he asks you, okay, what's our strategy for how to make us secure? This might be helping you answer that question. Hi. <laughs> oh, we're on camera. Nice. <laughs> okay. Um, the second part is the survey, and actually, I'm, so, so I'm particularly excited about the survey because there were quite a number of things that were obvious, but on the other hand, also a number of things that I found quite surprising to see. And as a small disclaimer, so the survey is not finished yet, and all of you here in the room, I have a small card later with a link to the survey, and I would invite you to um, still fill it out because we're still collecting some input. So I, at the moment, I'm actually breaking uh, one unwritten research rule that you should not disclose results before you finish. <laughs> but I just found the results so exciting, and the next AppSec EU will be one year in the future, so by then it, it may not be that uh, current. By that time, we might already have the next survey. So I wanted to share this information with you. Uh, the process is we have an online survey of uh, about 26 questions and we follow this up with um, some uh, deeper interviews, personal interviews on the phone with people who, uh, with uh, volunteers who basically in the survey say yes, we are open to uh, answer some more detailed questions on a phone. Um, we got more than 100 replies so far and from a broadband of industries. Quite, I would say, uh, a number of them are financial, but many other industries are there as well. So some of the findings that we had, probably all guessed so far, um, it seems infra we compared between infrastructure security and application security. And one of the questions was, how much do you see threats facing your organization in the future? Do you think um, you will see more threats in application security. Will this increase? Do you think you need to have more investment in, um, uh, in infrastructure? No, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Uh, the first one was, do you see more external threats coming to you or internal? So are you more afraid of people inside your organization or outside? And as you see here, we actually have a, uh, most people ex uh, expect there will be a huge increase in external attacks. So it seems that a lot of the organizations feel that, okay, internally we are kind of, we did our homework so far. Um, most people think that in the, it will probably be the same regarding internal. So that the dark blue is external attacks and the light blue is um, internal. Can you see, can you, can you read this actually at the back? Or is, yeah? Okay, great, perfect. Um, a second one, as I mentioned before, is that we were thinking about IT infrastructure and application security. And sometimes you have this competition between, uh, do I buy another firewall, do I buy another antivirus, or do I do some more pen testing, or do I uh, introduce some more process steps in my SDLC? Um, what would you guess? 
uh, would I rather buy another firewall or would I see the threat is more coming from the application layer? Who thinks the threat is more from the infrastructure layer? Show of hands. Nobody's moving. Okay, who thinks it's more from the application layer? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir, so that might be the problem with the statistical part. But the managers we asked are actually not only for application security. So they actually also see um, a majority coming of the risks from the application. This is probably a little bit small. So you see here infrastructure is the, 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 the first, the dark one. So the peak is about 30%, the main risks from infrastructure. While the main risk coming from applications is about 70%. So for, for, for most people, we basically ask them to rate how much, how much would you allocate the risk and it should add up to 100. So 70% was the peak. So most people would say 70% is application security related and 30% is only infrastructure. If you think about what was maybe 10 years back, most people would probably have more fear from antivirus malware and, and people breaching your firewall than anybody looking at your application. So unfortunately, we don't have data from the year before because we just started with this. But it will be interesting to see whether this will shift further in the future towards more application even. Yeah, um, what would you say is... No, actually, I, I'm just going to show you this one. So the, we also asked him about the perceived change compared to 12 months ago. So how much has this shifted in their perception? So we didn't measure them 12 months ago, but at least we could ask them. And one thing we saw is, well, for infrastructure, they would say, most people would say it's the same level of, of risk, the same level of threats. Um, while for application, it definitely is increasing in their perception. So compared to last year, they felt this year is more threatening. We have to actually look more and invest more in application security. Um, yeah, that actually also ref reflects an investment, which might be interesting for some of the vendors who are sitting outside. Um, so we saw that infrastructure security uh, oh, I should say the left one is decreasing, constant, and the right one is increasing. So for application security, it's some, about 35, keep it the same, and quite a number of, nearly half will increase actually their investment in application security. While for infrastructure, the majority will rather keep it, and some people will still increase it a little bit. And as we are always, we also wanted to ask them, what's the key security priorities? So what, what kind of projects do they want to look at for the next 12 months? So let me ask you, what are your key application security priorities? If you think about what will you do the next 12 months? Any comments? Anyone with the courage? Okay, this is all secret, maybe. If you tell me, you have to kill me. So, okay, that's, that's, okay. Oh, okay, then, then, then let me give you in just five minutes the key uh, priorities that we had back. So we asked them for about, to choose between, I think it was about a dozen different options. Um, and the three top priorities that we found is, that they want to look at for application security is the secure development lifecycle processes. The second one was security awareness, which is kind of not a surprise. I think this has been up there for a long time. And the third one was security testing, obviously, doing some testing, pen testing and so on after the fact. In that, in that order. Um, and as we are OWASP, we were also curious about what kind of level of significance do OWASP projects have in your organization? Because, I mean, we, we make a lot of projects and it's sometimes hard to understand who uses what, what's useful for you. This might also be useful information for you because maybe you can write along with the others. 
I mean, what's good for others might also be good for you. So the project's uh, technology, or somebody already hacked my laptop. Um, so the projects we found with, um, with some distance is the awareness material was significant for them. Code development guidelines, reference to leading practices. Um, so, so why is this uh, important to your organizations? Testing methodologies, and actually only rather late came sending people to AppSec conferences, at least for the managers. <laughs> I mean, for me, it's important to come here and it's important to meet people, but maybe they think, well, yeah, they have a good time in Hamburg at the beach, who knows? Yesterday we were at the beach cafe, so, yeah. Um, and the projects, with, with a big distance, obviously, I think uh, it's kind of not surprising that the top 10 is still number one. But there are quite a number of other projects quite useful. And the development guide, the secure code, yes, now I have the name, hooray! Secure coding practices quick reference guide. <laughs> Five long words. Um, but if you can speak them and if you can type them in your browser, you can find it. And it's a really cool document. So I'm, I'm quite happy to see that some people are picking that up. Uh, the cheat sheets, obviously, I think we are preaching that also for a while now, and it seems uh, that organizations appreciate the value of the cheat sheets. And the application security FAQ. So, and, and as a small disclaimer, we did not give them a list of 168 active projects to choose from. So people in the survey only had about 30 projects to choose from, because otherwise uh, we didn't want to confuse people with a very, very long list of cryptic names. So, um, yeah, actually the challenges, um, which was also a little bit surprising. I mean, sometimes you hear from managers or from organizations, oh, we don't have money for this. And so I was quite curious whether the budget would be the key challenge for them. But honestly, it is on number five of the key challenges, whether you have an adequate budget. What is on number one is whether you have people who have the right skills. Because, well, you can have a lot of money and you can buy a lot of boxes and put them somewhere in the corner. If you have nobody who can operate this stuff, uh, you're kind of at a loss. And it seems people are understanding that they really need this skill. And it goes hand in hand with the increase in training and awareness. So I'm still hopeful that maybe we get some more of this education through universities and also through companies. Um, second top leading part is also the level of security awareness by the developers. That's another concern. Because, well, we have thousands hundreds of thousands of developers. But I think only a small percentage are really aware of what security problems they may create. Yeah, and here I think this is probably more typical. Oh yeah, my manager doesn't care, doesn't know about security. So potentially not too surprising. And let me ask you, what do you think how many people have uh, a documented application security strategy in their organization? Any guesses? 50%, 80%, 100%, 10%, 30%? 30%. 30%. 20%. 20%. Any, any takers? Any higher? Any lower? Sorry? Lower. 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 Ooh, pessimists. Okay. Any other takers? Maybe I should start with some prices, so you can win something. <laughs> we don't have optimists here? Okay. And I think pessimism is not wrong, but 20% is a little bit low. So, well, does it jump? It's 40%. Um, 
Yeah, about 40% do have a documented. No, no, sorry, 57, 56% claim to have a documented application security process. But guess what? You will be right in another way. Just wait a second. Because another question would be, do you believe your, your strategy um, does still reflect the increased use of social networking, personal devices, and so on? So if you think about this is the strategy they have, like 50, 56%, and how many of these people do think this still reflects reality that they have? And now we are coming closer to the 20%. Only 27% think what they currently have as a strategy does reflect the new challenges they will face. So potentially, you, I think the 20% is not a bad guess, if it would be the accurate. And actually, quite a number of people plan to revise their application security strategy quite soon. Um, another interesting bit I found was actually for how long people plan. So, I mean, I would have expected a year would be fairly common. But there are a number of people who actually plan much shorter. So their time horizon for the strategy is only three months. While others, I mean, there are some people out there, 5%, who have a five-year plan. Yeah, like China, we have a 10-year development plan. And we have no idea what's happening in, nine, in year 9 and 10, because whatever. The world may go down by then. Um, but still, I, I, I found this quite useful in the terms of, okay, at least some people have a long-term perspective if they make an investment. Um, what was a little bit shocking for me is how many people would have an application security management system or something like a maturity model. And I guessed at the, when, when I, what would be your guess? Actually, let me ask you first. How many people use a maturity model or something in their organization? 25%. 25? Yeah, you're a fan of OpenSAM, no? That, that, yeah, other, other, other guesses, some more optimists? Oh, I have only silent people here in the room. Come on. 30% or less. Sorry? 20 or less. That's your, your favorite number, 20%. So when you go and buy a car, 20% off. <laughs> um, yeah, you're even better. <laughs> When I saw this, I kind of cried. <laughs> Less than 5%. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, we really have a long way to go with OpenSAM, okay? There's a lot of potential. See it this way. 95% we have to get. <laughs> and I mean, fortunately, there are some people in the process of, of implementing. And, and quite a number of people are open to consider. So yes, they are considering, about half, I think. So this, this is the target group for you, Seba. Go for it. <laughs> um, but I was really surprised about how few actually have it running today. Um, so even if you add up these two yeses or, or these three, you are still below 20. Let me see. Oh yeah, what's probably more common is what kind of standards people use and refer to. Um, this is more something so you, when, when you come to people and talk with them that you understand what kind of requirements they will have. Um, so obviously I think ISO 2701 is kind of fairly well accepted. Uh, PCI DSS, well, maybe not accepted, but most people don't have a choice, at least from my humble personal experience. Um, the NIST handbooks are actually sometimes quite cool. And then, ah, Seba, I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, I, I mean, at OWASP, we, we still have some room to grow. Let's, yeah, there's a lot of space. <laughs> um, maybe to close, to finish, Two things that I found quite interesting is about what people perceive is the threat that they have from application security and how many, how many breaches they detected. 
um, because that, that kind of plays into whether people change. I mean, in, in my personal experience, I often come to companies and after I work with them for a while, I ask, hey, actually, what triggered you asking me to come in? And I would say in half of the cases, at least, people later tell me, well, you know, actually, there was a breach. And we decided we need to do something other. But don't tell anybody. <laughs> so, um, so I was wondering how, how, much, how many breaches do we actually see in the industry at the moment? And how, how does this link with the perception of the, the threat? So what do you think, how many companies believe they got breached or, or got a data, how did we call it, a data breach because of a web application security incident in the last 12 months? Want to try some percentages again? 50%. 50 percent. Yeah, that's an optimist. Okay. Or actually a pessimist. <laughs> other percentages, other guesses. 70. Even more? Yeah, oh, even more. 70% oh, 70 data breaches in the last 12 months detected. Did, yeah, well, I mean, if you don't know about it, how would you say about it? Oh, okay, maybe in this case we actually asked them, so it might be a guess. Okay, so 50%, 70%. You want to try your 20% again? <laughs> Okay. Actually, you would be right. <laughs> Sorry, this time you would be right. Um, about 20% uh, perceived that, did your company experience a data breach, breach because of a web application security? So one in five, which I think is still, I mean, it, it leaves the question, do the other 80% just live happily in oblivion and just don't know it? <laughs> which might very well be the case, or is it maybe a reasonable assumption? And actually, even, even one in five is quite a hit. I mean, imagine, just look in the room, that would be one person in every row would have a data breach in the next 12 months. You know, you just have to look at the people next to you, and one of your colleagues in this row will probably have it, or you. So I think one in five is quite, quite a bad thing, depending on what your CEO will do with you if it happens. But what I actually liked is, so even with this relatively, maybe a relatively low number, we asked, okay, do you see new threats to the web applications negatively impacting your organization? And that was actually quite a high number. So that means, decoupled from how many breaches you got, you still have a relatively high awareness of potential threats due to web application security problems. So about, uh, what was it, nearly 70%, no, 60, 67% were seeing, okay, this is, there is potential threats coming due to this. So, um, this is just a flavor of the report that we are currently compiling. Um, you will be able to download it in about six weeks, I guess. Sorry for the waiting time. Uh, it will be available on the OWASP website. Um, we are still crunching the numbers. So, what's coming? We extended the open survey time a little bit. We are currently in the process of conducting interviews to get some more in, in deeper insight, because you can ask these statistical questions, but sometimes it helps to go behind that and say, okay, and why do you think is that? To understand what's actually the, the root cause. And we are doing the number crunching to do some cross-reference and industry-specific parts. So please excuse me, we are still processing, processing, please wait, stay tuned. And yeah, so here are the resources. So we have the uh, CISO guide, which I um, would encourage you to take. That's basically ready, well, fairly ready now and will still be approved a little, improved a little bit over the next few weeks. And the CISO survey, which will be ready in about six to eight weeks. You can also or you can just shoot me an email uh, with questions. Or you ask your questions now. 
Yep. Will the survey data be published normalized for the size of the companies that are responding and the industries that they're in, or just in general? Um, okay. it, Sorry. Repeat the question. Um, the question was: Will the uh, will the survey data be published, normalized for the size of the industries uh, and and the industry size of the company and industry? Um, that depends on whether we get enough to make it anonymous. So uh, for some industries, we will be able to do that as a subset, but for others, if we only have five from an industry, we will not. Um, make it uh, break it down for that industry because uh, obviously we, we need to protect uh, the private information of the survey person. Other questions I can help with? How do you recruit the participants of the survey? I could imagine that most of the participants of the survey are people who already have heard of OWASP, so are probably more application security aware than the average CISO? Um, there is, a, I mean, with all research, there is always a, a bias, a selection bias, yes. Um, but in this case, we, we try to be more open. So we recruit people from the survey, uh, for the survey from CISO summit events, which are not specific to OWASP. Um, another part is people who attended some of my CISO trainings in the past, uh, which is a little bit OWASP related, but I would say I also did some stuff outside of OWASP. So maybe half of the population has, has an OWASP context and the other half not. So, yeah. Other questions? Well, thank yeah. you very much. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yes. Thank you.